My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Alhamdulillah, it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given me and you the ability and tawfiq to participate in this gathering and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this gathering a source of guidance for all of us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this gathering one of the means of our entry into Jannah. <coughs> As you all brothers know that I normally don't talk about politics in Majumma Khutbah but at times things happen in the Ummah that cause us to stop and to reflect and ponder and I think then it is the responsibility of the ulama to comment on these <coughs> issues to make some sense out of what is going on you know to provide some kind of religious and spiritual guidance I personally believe and I think <coughs> the, primary, the primary purpose of any khutbah is to increase our iman and is to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but like I said before at times things happen in the ummah that cause us to stop and pause that cause us to reflect and ponder that even cause us to question our own iman that why is this happening to the ummah where the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not coming what are some of the lessons that we should learn so I believe in such kind of times it is the responsibility it is very imperative for the ulama and for the a'imma and for the students of knowledge to talk about the political crisis that is happening in the ummah according to UNO and UNO is a very conservative body <coughs> they have recently estimated that there are over 1 million children who have been declared refugees in Syria over 1 million children who are under the age of 12 they have been declared refugees they have been displaced from their homes and they are living in refugee camps and these are children what do you think about adults how much more of adults again according to you I know I'm taking this estimation not because I love you I know I'm taking this estimation because this is the lowest end statistic Wallahi, every other organi organization has much more than that <clears throat> but I'm taking this estimation because UNO is a credible body and everyone trusts UNO according to UNO they have recently estimated that over 100,000 people have been killed in this conflict over 100,000 people in this conflict of Syria <clears throat> and they have said that this is the worst catastrophe of this century the worst catastrophe of this century is the conflict of Syria Rawada and all other catastrophes they all are dwarf they all are dwarf by what is happening in Syria so the question arises okay I'm not living in Syria I'm not suffering in such kind of manner I'm not suffering because of calamities I'm living in the UK and I'm living a very comfortable life alhamdulillah but the question arises as a Muslim what should be my response to this crisis what should be my reaction to what is going on in Syria and this is a very valid question so I want to share with you five simple things five action points these are not the things that I'm just going to say these are the action points and we need to think about them and we need to reflect upon them and we need to bring them into our practices five action points number one <clears throat> there should be some kind of sympathy there should be some kind of empathy there should be some kind of pain and suffering that we should feel for the entire ummah Prophet said that this entire ummah kajasad in wahid this entire ummah is like one single body so if one limb is suffering the entire body will be suffering in pain until that limb is cured and the reality is today we have been attacked by multiple places we have multiple wounds we don't just have one limb that is bleeding we have multiple limbs bleeding some of them are traumatic some of them the bleeding is so much that we don't even know if that portion of our body is going to survive or not then my dear brothers and sisters in Islam how is it possible that when the ummah is suffering so much 
that our hearts become so cold and so careless that we don't even know what is going on. We don't even care. Wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there are people, there are people who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but they are standing up and they are doing something for our brothers and sisters. There are people who don't have any iman in their hearts, but they are protesting and they are petitioning and they are campaigning and they are doing whatever they can. They are doing something because they see what's going on. They are doing something. How much more is this our obligation to do something? There has to be some kind of connection with the ummah. There has to be. Let me ask you this simple question. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect me and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect my family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect your children and your family. But let me ask you this question. If what is happening in Syria is happening to you right now. If what is happening in Burma is happening to you right now and to your family right now, wouldn't you be saying, where is the Ummah? Where is the help of the Ummah? Why people are not looking at us? Why people are not talking about us? Won't you be saying this? Wallahi, every single one of us will be saying this. Every single one of us. And the irony of this matter is that the land that we are talking about, the land of Sham, the land of Syria, is not very far away from the UK. It's not very far away from the UK. Every single one of us who is sitting here, or if not everyone, most of us, most of us, we know people, we have friends from Syria. We have friends. And their families back home, their relatives back home, their friends back home, they have been butchered. They have been killed. They have been tortured, they have been targeted, they have been harassed. Or at least they are suffering. So it's not as if it's happening on some other planet or in some other civilization. This is our ummah, this is our masjid, this is our family. How is it possible that we go about and enjoy our life? And we behave as if nothing is going wrong. Nothing is, we behave as, that, as if that there is nothing wrong. There has to be some kind of connection. There has to be some kind of attachment with the ummah. There has to be some kind of awareness. Follow the news. Find out what is going on. Find out what is going on. Watch all these traumatic videos. You can watch YouTube and the videos of YouTube for hours and hours and hours. Sometimes there are youngsters sitting in the khutbah. I'm not talking about my masjid. Alhamdulillah, all of you people, my audience is very attentive. And I, I thank you for that. Jazakumullah. But there are times that I've participated in gatherings and I've seen youngsters playing with their mobile phones in the khutbah. On YouTube, watching YouTube videos. If you can watch all those YouTube videos, then sometime you should watch those traumatic videos of the people of Syria. I know it's difficult to watch, but watch them. And imagine if that mother is you, if that father is you, if this is your son who is suffering, just imagine that. What should be your response? And you should know that if your heart is soft, if your heart is tender, then you should know, Alhamdulillah, this is a sign of Iman. These two cars, sulfur cars, Peugeot and Astra, are parked in a property. Don't you see? Peugeot. Peugeot. And Astra. Silver. Two silver cars parked in a property and they are blocking the ways. Uh, Astra and? Peugeot. Peugeot, I don't know actually the names of the cars. Two silver cars, they are parked, un, uh, they are, they are blocking the way, they are parked inappropriately, two silver cars. So I would request brother, whoever uh, has this car, if they can go downstairs and move the car. Jazakumullah. So I was saying that we should watch these videos and we should imagine what should be our response if we were in that place. And you should know that if your heart is tender and if your heart is soft, this is a sign of Iman. That Alhamdulillah, this is a sign that there is some life, there is some pulse in your heart. But if you don't feel anything, if our heart have become so sealed that we don't feel anything afterwards, then inna lillahi wa inna ilihi rajiun. Then it means that our heart is cold. It has no life. It has no love and concern for the ummah. So number one, sympathy. Number two, 
The least that we all can do is to make dua. Make regular duas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the most stingy person is someone who cannot even make dua. Bakhil, abkhalun nas. He is the most stingy person. What dua is going to cost you? What is it going to cost you? Just raise your hands up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make a sincere dua for all of your brothers and sisters who are suffering in Syria, who are suffering all around the world. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that dua that comes from your heart. Make dua to Allah. And wallahi brothers, if your dua does not benefit them, it might save you on the day of judgment. Even if it does not benefit them, it might save you on the day of judgment. Because on the day of judgment, when Allah will ask you, what were you doing when the ummah was suffering? What were you doing? You would say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I couldn't do anything other than making dua. And Ya Allah, this was something that I sincerely did day and night. So Ya Allah, accept it from me. So your duas, it may not benefit them, but it will benefit you on the day of judgment. So make a lot of duas for your brothers and sisters. Number three, you know, one of the calamities of this situation is that it tests the iman of a person. Shaitan will come and shaitan will whisper you. And shaitan will say to you, how is this religion, how can this religion be a true religion? How can this Lord be a true Lord? How can he allow something like this to happen to you? You are the followers of Allah. You believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then how can his followers be suffering in such kind of manner? One thing that we need to make sure that in these kinds of situations, we don't allow our iman to become weak. This is one of the plots of shaitan. Shaitan uses these kinds of opportunities to weaken your iman. He uses these kinds of... And Allah mentions it in the Quran, وَزُلْزِلُوا زِلْزَالًا shadida. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the iman of sahaba was shaken. They were shaken to the core. You know when the battle of Ahzab took place, when the battle of trenches took place, Muslims were under siege. They were surrounded by the enemies. From every direction they can see the enemy, ready to attack them. This was a very, very tough situation. And in that tough situation, Allah said, وَتَزُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الزُّنُونَ even the true believers, the Sahaba, the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they begin to have bad kind of thoughts. And Allah said, Hunali kabtuli al mu'minuna wa zulzilu zilzal and shadida. On that occasion I tested their iman. Their iman were tested in that kind of situation. Do you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? Do you believe that Allah has a plan or not? Wallahi brothers. Wallahi brothers, maybe we don't understand the plan of Allah, but Allah has a plan. Maybe we don't see the results. Maybe we don't know when the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. But inshallah, definitely the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. We have to have yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the third point. Have belief in Allah. Number four. We need to analyze our own situation. We need to ask ourselves, why is this happening to the Ummah? We need to ask ourselves, what is, this, what is it that I can do in my daily life? Wallahi brothers, you look at all these places that are being attacked one after another. What has happened in the last five years, only Allah knows if we are next or not. You think you are in the UK so you are safe? There is no guarantee. What happened in the last five years, only Allah knows if we are next or not. But before it happens, we need to strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to have a strong connection with Allah. Alhamdulillah, we are living in UK. We are living a comfortable life. We are not suffering because of calamities, but we have an opposite suffering. And this is a suffering of luxury. This is a suffering of a carefree life. This is a suffering of being deluded by the dunya. And in some ways this suffering is easy, but in some ways this suffering is more difficult. This suffering is easy because you don't want to lose your, you don't want to lose your child. You don't want to lose your family, you don't want to lose your wife. It's easy. You don't want to, you don't want to be shot by a sniper. So it's easy in this way, but it is difficult. You know why it is difficult? Because when you lose a child or when you lose your wife, 
Or when you lose your family member, your iman goes up. Your ghayrah for your religion, your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reach the top most level. But if you are a person who is living, alhamdulillah, a carefree life, earning a beautiful earning, a comfortable earning, driving to his, driving to his work in a luxury car, going into his air-conditioned office, alhamdulillah, this is a kind of person, I'm not saying that it happens to every single one of us, but this is a kind of person, it's very easy for him to neglect Allah. It's very easy for him to forget Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa It's very easy for him to neglect his spirituality. It's very easy for him. Alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Alhamdulillah, Allah has protected us from physical suffering. But the least we all can do is that we don't allow our spirit to suffer by being dead. Make sure that you have a connection with Allah. Make sure that you're reading your salawat every single day punctually. Make sure that you're doing something extra in these days. Something extra. Extra ibadat, extra dua, extra Quran, extra worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, extra, extra charity. Make sure that your iman is going up. And make dua to Allah that Allah protect you and your family. Make dua to Allah. If we are not suffering in that manner, let's exert ourselves and strive ourselves in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon us. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise our ranks in the hereafter. Our brothers and sisters who are suffering in Syria, our brothers and sisters who are suffering in Palestine, in Burma, in Iraq, all of our brothers, mashallah, their ranks have already been raised. Their ranks have already been raised, alhamdulillah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase their ranks. But we are not ready to be tested in that manner. We are not. We are used to this comfortable life. So we are not ready to be tested in that manner. So let's try. Let's strive. Let's exert ourselves to reach the same level through our worshipping. Through our ibadah, through our dua, through our Quran, through our zikr. How is it possible, my brothers? How is it possible that we go about and enjoy our life when the entire ummah is bleeding from head to toe? You tell me. How can you be so careless and just go about and enjoy your life and you feel like there is nothing wrong? How can we do that? There has to be some kind of connection and we need to increase our Iman. So this was the fourth point. Number fifth, last point. And this is a topic in and of itself. But a quick summary of it. All of this that is happening, that you see around the world, it's already been predicted in our traditions. If you are one of those people who are aware of the sayings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa if you are one of those people who are aware of Ashratu Sa'a, the sign of the day of judgment, you probably should know that everything is fitting into its place. Nothing is coming out of the blue. And this actually proves that we are living in a time that is very, very, very close to the end of times. Prophet ﷺ predicted many things. I cannot tell you all those things, but few things that I want to tell you and I want to share with you. Prophet ﷺ predicted in an authentic narration mentioned in Musnad Imam Ahmad. He said, a time will come when you will have leaders that are worse for you than non-Muslim leaders. He said it 1400 years ago. You will have leaders that are worse for you than non-Muslim leaders. And here we are, alhamdulillah, living a comfortable life. Living in freedom under a non-Muslim leadership. Yeah, we talk about Donald Trump, we talk about Brexit, but alhamdulillah, relatively, we are living in comfort. We are living, we are living in freedom under a non-Muslim leadership. And there are lands that are Muslim lands who have Muslim leaders, and they are worse for Muslims than the lands that we are living in. Prophet predicted it. Can you imagine? He predicted it 1400 years ago when he was there. When Sahaba were there. When the Khilafah was there. No one could imagine this at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. At the time of Sahaba, when the Khilafah was there, no one could have imagined this. But Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam predicted this, and today we see how it's coming true. In another hadith, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam predicted there will be armies. Listen to this carefully. There will be armies. There will be police. He literally used the word shurta. 
they will be police they will move and go about in the anger of Allah they will wake up in the morning they will walk in the anger of Allah they will come back in the anger of Allah yamshun yaruhun yahudun their entire activity is under the ghadab and anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said make sure you're not one of them and today we see we see the police in so many Muslim lands they are doing things that are clearly haram what is happening in Syria the police is killing its own people its own civilian people and he predicted it 1400 years ago one hadith that I want to share with you and then I finish inshallah the hadith of Abu Musa Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon one occasion he said before the day of judgment there will be al-haraj al-haraj and sahaba said ya rasulullah what is al-haraj and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there will be a lot of killing there will be a lot of chaos and then later on Abu Musa Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu he was narrating the same hadith to his students after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is narrating the same hadith to his students and one of his students asked Ya Abu Musa how much can they kill? how many can they kill? and Abu Musa Ashari said I'm not talking about them I'm talking about us I'm not talking about non-Muslims killing us I'm talking about Muslims killing Muslims and his student said Ya Abu Musa Ashari will we have no aql in those days? we will have no aql in those days? how can a Muslim kill another Muslim? will we be insane? will we go mad in those days? is it possible that Muslims are killing Muslims more than non-Muslims are killing Muslims? is it possible? and Abu Musa Ashari radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that the intellect of most of the people will be taken away there will be no aql in the mind of people an evil group of people they will take over and they think that they will appoint something they think that they have a legitimate cause they can kill people but they have no legitimate cause think about this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned in Musnad Imam Ahmad he said Muslims will kill other Muslims more than no Muslims will kill Muslims and they said will we have no aql in those days and he said no you think that you are upon something you think that you have aql you are the most intelligent people you have an agenda you are upon truth but you have no truth you have no truth there is no justification of Muslim killing other Muslims there is no justification of Muslim armies bombing and killing their own civilians there is no justification and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam predicted the hadith and mentioned in Sahih Bukhari he said I swear by the one in whose hand my life is the day of judgment will not come until a person will kill some other person and he will not even know why he killed that person can you imagine this <coughs> a killer will kill someone and he doesn't know why he killed that person and in this land, just in this week, an innocent person is killed, you know? He was killed just for the fun of it. Literally just for the fun of it. Some teenagers, some Muslim teenagers in Glasgow, go and check the news. Some Muslim teenagers, young Muslim teenagers, they were bored. And they didn't know what else to do, so they go out, they went out and they killed somebody. Just for the fun of it, they killed it. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam predicted this 1400 years ago. People will kill and they don't even know what they are killing. And this is happening in this, in this land it's happening. It's happening in the Muslim lands and in this land. And unfortunately it's a sad reality that this news does not even reach the front page headline. Because we are so immune to it. We are so used to such kind of bloodshed. The people don't even feel that we need to share these kinds of news. So five things, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, five things I want to remember, I want you to remember. Five action points. Number one, sympathy. Number two, make dua. Number three, increase your iman. Number four, change your situation. Change your situation. And number five, understand and realize whatever is happening, it's already been mentioned and it's already been predicted in our text. So the day is coming, my brothers. My brothers and sisters in Islam, that day 
is coming when Allah will ask the Azalim, why did you do zulam? And Allah will ask the Muslim, why did you allow that zulam to happen to you? Allah will ask us, that day is coming, be prepared for that day. Be prepared for that day. All of these signs have clearly indicated that this day is very, very close. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who prepare for that day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the people of action and not just the people who talk. Not just the people who talk. But the people who live Islam and who share Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of our brothers and sisters who are suffering in Syria, who are suffering in Burma, who are suffering in Palestine, who are suffering in Kashmir, who are suffering in Iraq, all over the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate their ranks. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who do something for them. And the least we all can do is to make dua for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us united in this dunya and may Allah reunite us in the hereafter.